We're praying even right now, Lord God, that they're worshiping with us. They're lifting your holy name up with us, Father God, as we glorify you. You said that you be lifted up, Father God, you will draw all men unto you, Father God. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Let's give the Lord a hand.
intimacy of the Holy Ghost. Through the breath in our being, as we are on the timeline of Jesus Christ. That no circumstance can stand against the timeline of God. We are no longer on the timeline of Satan. We are no longer on the timeline of things that have been destroyed in our lives. Because we serve the God who makes the sun stand still. We serve the God that makes the sun back up ten steps high. We serve the God that redeems the time for our mistakes even. Hallelujah. It's in the Bible. Read it. Hallelujah. He's the redeemer of time. Yes. We are to redeem the time. We are to redeem the time that he's given us the ability to redeem. Yeah. And as we do that, the descendants of the righteous shall be saved. Amen. I don't care how bad you think Amen. you messed up your name. How bad you think you messed up relationships. The redeemer of time is here to say, get on my timeline. Because there is no time to waste in this 11th hour. Hallelujah. There is no time to waste. God says, don't let time be your most precious commodity. Let me be your precious commodity. Let what I can do, says the Lord, be your precious commodity. Let it be something that will not wither. It will not fade in the circumstances at work, in the circumstances at school, in the circumstances even at home even past things. The enemy cannot destroy you with those any longer. Amen. As you worship, as you enter the throne room of God and you release it, you release it once and once and for all. And then you just thank Him for the answers. You thank Him for your children serving, satisfied, saved, healed. This day, this day, transition, Father God, to worship and word, Father God. We pray as always that you speak, Father God. You speak, Father God. You give us an ear to hear what you have to say, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done. We thank you for your presence, Father God, that fills the room, Father God. 
We thank you, Lord God, for visiting us again, Father God. Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Sometimes you got to give God the glory and the praise. Okay. And sometimes we, we be looking at tenderly feeling, but Lord, I know you're here. Amen. And I'm going to give you praise because I know you're here. I'm going to glorify your name because I know that you are here, Father God. Yes. Yes. Sometimes you just got to give God the praise for what he is doing. Even sometimes you cannot see what God is doing, but God, I'm going to give you praise because I know that you're still working. Yes. Amen. Yeah. We got to get past the tingly feeling. Oh, I feel God. Sometimes you're not going to feel God, but that does not mean he's not surrounding you. That does not mean he's not with you. That does not mean that his hand is not upon you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If we can turn to the book of Ephesians 5 and 18, I have quite a few scriptures to talk from on tonight. And I'm going to follow the blueprint that the Lord has given me. Amen. Amen. And this is the scripture that he told me. His son, start here. Amen. And then I'm going to show you how to navigate through this. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 18. You find it, you can say amen. Amen. If you didn't find it, you say, hold on. Say this, I love the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I love the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you just got to say, I love the Holy Ghost. He's you amazing. Through things, I love the Holy Ghost. You want to stir up the Holy Ghost and just begin to glorify the Holy Ghost. Amen. Begin to talk about the goodness of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. And you will see that, that that stirring in your belly will begin. Amen. Here's Ephesians 5 and 18. It says, do not be drunk with wine, for that is reckless living, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Father God, we come to you once again. We thank you for this opportunity to speak to your children. They belong to you, Father God. Yeah. And they come to hear you and see you, Father God. And we pray, Father God, that through this message, they will be able to see you. Through this message, they get fresh revelation, Father God, from you. Give us an ear to hear what you have to say, Father God. And you'll be glorified on tonight. And he thanks back in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. If I was to put a couple titles with this, one would be Breathe on Us Again. And another will be, fill me again. Amen. I want you to transition me to the book of John, uh, the 20th chapter. Um, we're going to look at verses 21 to 23. As you're turning to that book, John is a very unique book. I've talked about John before. Yes. Because John is really not one of the synoptic gospels. Um, and this particular passage of scripture that we're going to read on tonight you won't find in Matthew, Luke, or Mark. Amen. Because when John wrote his letter or his gospel, he wrote as he witnessed, as he, uh, when things was revealed to him. Amen. And so, as we look at uh, John 20, verse 21, this is Jesus uh, speaking to the apostles. He is now resurrected and he has appeared to the disciples, which yes. soon to be mm -hmm. apostles. And he says this right here. He says, so Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And what we are experiencing right here is the apostolic mandate. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that, that there's an apostolic mandate. When we talk about apostles, apostles mean sent or sent one. Mandate means commission. Yes. And so we have to understand we just can't go as God has to commission us. Amen. So we either he has to send us, he has to call us, or we have to be chosen. Amen. You just can't go because you feel like it. Right. But what we're experiencing here is an apostolic mandate because as he's saying very clearly right here, um, as my father has sent me. Amen. Now Jesus said, now that I have resurrected, I have all power and authority from my Father. Now I'm yet sending you. Yes. Thank you, 
Jesus. Come on, come on. Right. In other words, he is letting us know that through scripture we're seeing the apostolic mandate being passed down from the father to the son. Amen. And then the son preparing the disciples and to release them. But then also it's the Holy Ghost that yet sends us. Yes. Uh, you want scripture on today? If you was to look at Acts the 13th chapter. It talks about Paul and Barnabas, and they were praying and fasting. Uh -huh. And after they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost commissioned them or sent them out on an assignment. Amen. So he says right here, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. He says, when he has said this, he had breathed yes. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. on them. Yes. Uh -huh. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And what was transpiring here? Is there was a preparation of the promise and the preparation of eternal life which was to come. Amen. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 and 45, it says, So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made by a living soul. When God breathed into Adam the same breath yes. that God breathed into Adam that made him a living being right. is the same breath that is being <laughs> breathed on the disciples. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh -huh. Before he commissioned them, he is yet preparing them for the promise, what was to come. Amen. Now we know the scripture tells us that Jesus, this is how you know the Holy Spirit didn't officially come. Because Jesus said, I have to leave yes. for the Holy yes. Spirit to come. Amen. But he's yet preparing them for this experience. He's yet Amen. preparing them for the promise. And that's what God does sometimes. When he's preparing you for greater, when he's preparing you for your assignment, yes. he will breathe on you. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to understand that when we read the word of God, it is breathing as we're reading yes. it. Yes. Amen. And the more revelation and the more understanding that we get of the word of God, the more that it breathes on us. Uh -huh. The more that it confirms the call and anointing on our life. Amen. That's why we're asking the Lord to breathe on us again. Yes. Amen. Mm. Living word. Because the Bible says it's, it's alive and active. Yes. yes. The word of God is supposed to be working in your life. The word yes. of God and God is not dead. And right. so if God is not dead and his word is alive, mm -hmm. his word and God is supposed to be working in your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he says this as we continue. He says, when he had, yes, verse 23. He says, if you, watch this, if you forgive the sins of anyone, then they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of anyone, then they are retained. And so Jesus goes right back to what he was saying in the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. He Jesus. said, listen, Amen. apostles to be, apostles to come, listen, you have to forgive. Yes. We talked about that Bible study, yes. canceling the debt. Yes. In other words, you only want to do ministry and you got all this debt, all this baggage. So you have to learn how to forgive and allow God to heal you. Amen. The reason why some people's ministries are not effective is because they don't know how to forgive. And so God teaches you how to forgive. And he's telling them here, as I've commissioned you, as I'm sending you, you're going to have to forgive. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't retain. You know how we get sometimes when somebody hurt us. Oh, I'm not going to forgive you. I'm never going to let this go. I'm always going to remind you of what you've done. God said, listen, in his word, he says, if you can't forgive them, how can God forgive, forgive you? you? Right. If you're not going to cancel their debt, then God said, how am I going to cancel your debt? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You want some things removed out of your life. And so you're going to have to learn how to forgive. You're going to have to learn how to let some things go. Amen. Wondering why you can't get the total healing that you need. You're wondering why you can't shift to another level with God. It's because you're struggling to forgive. Yes. Sometimes you just got to say, Lord, I forgive them. Yes. I went through a period of time where I went through and I said, Lord, I forgive my mama for saying things to me. I forgive my daddy for what he's done to me. I forgive my brother. I just started saying things that was in my spirit that God was revealing to me. And I said, Lord, I forgive. Amen. And the more I forgave, the more healing I experienced. Amen. So you got to learn how to let it go. Yes. Let go. Let go. But as you know, this is Jesus preparing them. And we can go to the book of Acts, which is the very next book. Because this thing continues. Okay. Now Luke is the writer of the first part of Acts. He's the writer of the gospel of Luke. But he is also the writer of the first part of Acts. And 
It tells us in Acts, this is Jesus still talking to the disciples. He had not yet ascended yet, so he had already breathed on them Amen. as a preparation of what's to come. Mm -hmm. But not only is this breath of giving them life, mm -hmm. but there's also power that yes. comes with his breath. Yes. yes. And he tells them here in verse 6, Acts 1 and 6, it says, So when they had come together, they had asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Verse 7, he says, and he says to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates. In other words, don't get so caught up in the times and the dates. Amen. Sometimes the reason why we miss what God is doing in our life is because we get so particular. <laughs> Lord, I thought you said you was going to bless me at 8 o'clock on Monday <laughs> afternoon. You be get so detailed yeah. with God. Amen. And so he said, listen, don't worry about the times or the dates. Yeah. But he says this which the Father has fixed by his own authority. In other words, what God has ordained and what God has set up, he got that thing set up. Yes. You will know when that time comes. Uh -huh. So you got to learn how to trust God, and God will let you know. It will be a quickening in your spirit. Yes. God will let you know when the time has come. Amen. But he says this right here. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now the same breath that gave life He's saying that same spirit, that same breath that's going to come upon you is going to give you power. Amen. Yes, sir. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, we are in the transition of the Old and the New Testament. We are about to experience the church. Amen. The church being birthed. Amen. So he says, but you should receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And he says, what? To be witnesses. So the reason why God empowered us is for us to be his witnesses. Amen. Uh -huh. That's why. That when you experience the power of God, you are a greater witness because you see the power of God working in your life. Yeah, and so now, because the power of God is working in your life, now you're telling people about what God is doing in yeah, your life. Yeah. Amen. So he says, I'm empowering you to be a witness. Amen. I'm empowering you to proclaim my gospel. Yes. I'm empowering you to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. I'm empowering you to heal the sick. I'm yeah. empowering you. Yes, Lord. That's why we need the power. Yes. That's why the Holy Spirit had to come. We see Jesus operate in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, yes. but the, the disciples and, and others and us included, we will not operate in the fullness until we receive him. Yes. But he says, you're going to be witnesses in Jerusalem where Jesus was rejected. The scripture said he had to get to Jerusalem yes. Yes. because he had to suffer in the hands of the priests. He had to suffer in the hands of the Pharisees. He had to get to Jerusalem. Yeah. Now he's saying, listen, you're going to be a witness. We're going to start at home first. That's right. Amen. That's where Jerusalem is. Jerusalem is at home. And that's why God tells us that we got to get our house in order. If a man can't manage his own house, then you can't manage the things of God. Amen. So our first responsibility, even though we want to be a great witness, to be a great witness, you got to get home straight. Yeah, Amen. I would not be effective in ministry if I didn't get home straight. Amen. I don't care how much God has anointed me, I gotta get home straight. Amen. Yes. I gotta be a witness in the home. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Amen. So he says, my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. Amen. He says, I'm empowering you. Not only am I sending you, so he's not just sending us. But he's sending us with power. Amen. Amen. There's nothing worse than for somebody to send you and you're not equipped. Yeah. Have you ever worked for a job and they hired you, but they didn't equip you yeah. to really yeah. work the job? And you're confused and you feel left yes, out? Yes, yes. Because you don't know what to do because they haven't equipped you? I even had a job and I resigned from the job. And I said, listen, you guys ain't trained me right. to work this job. And so what God is saying, when I send you, I'm giving you power to be a witness. I'm giving you power to function and operate as Jesus has operated. Amen. Amen. But let us continue. Because what happens is after he says all this... Jesus ascends. Yes. I told you that he spent 40 days on the earth yes. preparing them. Amen. The Bible tells us he was preparing them, teaching them about the kingdom. Yes. He was preparing them. 
for the Holy Spirit to come. And so after he ascends, we can transition into Acts chapter 2, where it, it says here, when the day of Pentecost had come, some Bible said fully come. That means it was the next 10 days. Jesus ascended after 40, and the next 10 days, they spent 10 days in the upper room seeking the face of God, getting prepared for the Holy Spirit to come and empower them. Amen. And it says here, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Verse 2 says, suddenly. Suddenly means unexpectedly or quickly. Amen. And when you want God to work unexpectedly in your life or quickly in your life, you got to learn how to keep your mind on him. Amen. I'm reminded of Paul and Silas. They were in jail and they were praying and praising God and God moved suddenly. Amen. Did. See, we don't like God so suddenly because a suddenly can be two or three days from now. But the reality of it does not stop God from moving suddenly. Amen. So we have to learn how to give God praise and worship him even in the midst. We got to learn how to focus on God even in the midst of our trouble. And you will see that your trouble was not as bad as you thought it was. Amen. And you will see God moving you out of trouble suddenly. Amen. He says suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven and it filled the house where they were sitting. And they appeared to them tongues as of fire. Amen. And we know fire represents being purification. Yes. It represents even sanctification. And, and that's one of the first things that God does when he saves us. He begins to sanctify and purify our tongue. Yes. Amen. What do you mean? In other words, I can't be a witness if I can't control this tongue. Amen. I'm, I'm reminded of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, where Isaiah is in the presence of God. And he said, listen, I am a man of unclean lips. And so the angel brings a coal, which is a representation of fire, and puts it on his lips. Because Isaiah could not prophesy or do what God has instructed him to do unless he was sanctified or purified. Amen. And so God can't use us effectively until the Holy Ghost sanctifies us and purifies our tongue. Amen. Amen. And so what we're seeing here it was tongues of fire that the way their tongues was moving yes. it was almost like a flame Amen. of fire. But what God was doing, if you're now seeing the beginning of the church yes. because God was just not upon you now God, you see, working on the inside Amen. of the believer and purifying the believer from the inside out. Yes. This is what's happening right here. We, we are the church. Yes. We are the church. We are what God is coming back for. Yes. John the Baptist said that, he says, I baptize you with water. Yes. Which was the practice of that time. Mm -hmm. It was something, the norm of that time. It was for outward cleansing. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he said, there is one that's coming greater that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and with fire. So in other words, there's not just having the spirit of God that gives a life, but then there's also fire. There's also sanctification and purification Amen. that comes with it. Yes. Amen. So it goes on to say, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Amen. So now we see the diversity of the tongue. We see the Holy Spirit uh, working in the believer. He's giving Galileans, that's why they were so thrown off, they said, how are they able to speak our dialect? How are you able to speak my language? You're saying in diverse tongues. Yes. Because when the day of Pentecost came, which is the festival of weeks, people would come from all over. All kind of nationalities would come all over yes. to this festival. And so what's happening is you're seeing the Holy Spirit work in the believer yes. and they're preaching the gospel in different languages. And the right. reason why they're so perplexed, the reason why they're so thrown off is because they say, how can you speak this language? You're not from my homeland. Right. You're not from where I'm from. How are you able to preach to me Amen. in my language? Amen. That's what's happening here. 
See, there's a difference of diversity of tongue and having your personal heavenly language. Yes. Paul says your heavenly language that God has given you edifies you. It builds you up. But if yes. you can't interpret it, then you need to just do it in the quiet of your time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because it brings confusion. Amen. That's why Paul had to put order with the Corinthians because the, the one group that was speaking in tongues thought they were so much more spiritual yes. than those who didn't mature in that right, area. Right. Yes, yes. So the purpose of the tongue, if it's your heavenly language, is to build you up in the faith. If you ever spent time with God by yourself, speaking in your heavenly language, yes. you will see your spirit man being built up in the faith. Amen. Amen. But this here is diversity of tongue. Yes. In other words, this is a divine ability that God gives us to speak in a different dialect. I may not went to school to learn this dialect, but God can speak through me to reach yeah. whoever yeah. I need to reach. Yeah. And that's what's happening on today. Oh, hallelujah. We will drop down to verse 7. He said, they were all amazed and marvel saying to each other, are are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each in our own native language? I love Jesus. And they give all the different nationalities and all the different, um, all those who are there. Mm -hmm. But watch this, let's drop down. Verse 12 says, And they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to each other, What does this mean? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Mm -hmm. They really was full of new wine. They really Amen. were. Yes. <laughs> but it wasn't the wine they thought they That's was full right. of. Amen. That's yes. right. See, the sim new wine is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But because they were ignorant and they didn't have the Holy Spirit, they're looking at these men that was full of the joy of the Lord. Uh -huh. They think they're they think they're drunk off right. of new wine right. or right. Of fermented wine. Yeah, right. That's what they're thinking they're drunk right. off of. But no, they were drunk in the Holy Ghost yes. because they were expressing the fullness yes. of God in yes. them. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so Peter stands up and says, "Listen, they are not drunk as you think they are. Yeah, it's too early. Matter of fact, this is not even an hour that they a man is supposed to be getting drunk. Yeah. This is not even an hour for this. But no, Amen. this is the this is what the prophet Joel has prophesied about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming and pouring His Spirit upon all flesh. Yes, this is what He was talking about. But you may ask, as I come to a close, what does Ephesians five and eighteen have to do with Acts uh, two and thirteen? When we go back to Ephesians 5 and 18, mm -hmm. it tells us here to not be drunk with wine. In other words, don't consume so much wine. Now, wine was something very popular. Yes. It does have some fermentation that if you drink or consume enough of it, as we say, you can get tipsy, you can get tipsy. drunk, you're showing up there. Yeah. The scripture tells us right here in 5 and 18, do not become drunk with wine, for that is reckless living. Yes. Uh, the Amplified says uh, wickedness yeah. comes out of it. Stupidity comes out of it. My Lord, I'm speaking. Okay, so this is the, that's the Amplified version. Yeah. So it's telling us don't be so consumed with wine. But if yeah. you want to, we can put an application. In other words, don't be so full of this world. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we want God to work in our life, but we're so full of this world, yes. it hinders the operation of God working in your life. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I asked you a question on a week ago, why are we not working or operating in the fullness of the kingdom of God? It's because sometimes we got too much world in us. Yes, amen, amen. We got too much of the wine of this world. Yes, amen. And we got to decide, what do you want to be filled with? Yeah. In this season, yeah. we need to be filled with power. We yeah. need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We don't need no more of this world in us. Yeah. This world has corrupted us. Yeah. This world has contaminated us. Yes, yeah. it has. And so, what God has to do, He has to empty us out. Yes. That's the only way He can fill us. Yes. He got to empty us out. Yes, right? Lord. And to fill us with more of Him. Yeah. My Lord Jesus. Aren't you tired of being drunk with this, the things of this world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. The things of this world has consumed us and filled us with so much filthiness. Yes. 
We have to choose who we're really serving. Are we serving the world or are we serving God? And what you're consumed with will determine what you, who you really serve. Do you want to be filled? Do you want to experience the fullness of God working in your life? Are you willing to let go of the things of this world? This world is distracting us. This world is getting darker. This world is getting more evil. And we allow ourselves to be consumed with this stuff. Amen. We're being consumed by what we listen to. Yes, sir. Amen. We're being consumed by what we watch. Yes. Yeah. And we're getting filled with all of this lies. Mm. All of this wickedness. Yes. And then we wonder why when we try to worship God, it's hard to yeah. enter into that intimate place with God. The reason Amen. why it's hard because you got too much world in you. Amen. When is the last time you really spent time with God and not be distracted with this worldly stuff? We know what's stuff going on in the world, but I don't have to allow myself to be so consumed. I can yeah. be aware. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I can share a concern. Yes. My Lord. That's good. It's time for us to be filled again. Amen. It's because you have the Spirit of God. You have a will within you. Yes. Amen. We shouldn't just get filled just one time. Right. We're supposed to get filled daily. Amen. I love Jesus. It. But we don't spend enough time with God to get filled daily. Mm. That's why altar calls be so dry. So dry. Because you come dry. Why? Because you're so contaminated with the world Amen. Amen. that you come to the house of God dry. And it takes us hours to get out of the flesh. And we're hoping that God moves. But God says you got to get self out of the way. Amen. I'm challenged every day that I got to get myself right. So when I come into the house of God, yeah. I'm not bringing all this world in here. Mm. I want to spend time with Him. Yeah. So when I come into his presence, I can enjoy the presence of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your word that's been released. Father God, if there is anything within us, if there's anything that has contaminated us, if there's anything that we have allowed to come into our hearts, if there's anything that we have allowed, Lord God, to control our minds, Jesus, what is it that we've been watching? What is it that we've been doing that's hindering us, Father God, from experiencing an infilling or an overflow of your Holy Spirit, Father God, yes, in us? What are we doing that is uh, uh, grieving the Holy Spirit? What are we yes. doing, Father God, that's stifling the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit wants to do uh, miraculous things within us? But Father God, we're so drunk with the wine of this world. We're so contaminated. We have uh, consumed too much of this world, Father God. Yes, Lord. And we don't even realize, Father God, that this world has became our God. Our Lord Jesus. Because we're consumed with so much of it. Yes, yes. So Father God, we just pray right now that you begin to empty us out. Yes. yes. Begin to empty our hearts out of, uh, of this worldly stuff. Our Lord Jesus. You know what, Father God, was in our hearts. You know that what's been on our minds, Father God. And if you can just begin to empty us out. Empty us out of the, the consumption of the stuff of this world. Yes. And begin to fill us more of you, Father God. Help us, Father God, to, to enjoy reading and studying your word, Father God. That you can fill yes. and we can get filled just reading and studying your word. Help yes, us, Father yes, God, yes, to yes. pray more effectively for our Father God. Yes. Yes, Lord. Not praying, thinking about ourselves, Father God, but really seeking the Holy Ghost yes, Lord. and what we should be praying for, that we can get full just through prayer, Father God. We can get full just through yes. fasting and yes. committing our life to you, Father God. We pray these things, Father God. In your precious son's name, Father God. That in the name of Jesus, Father yes. God, these things that consume us will bow down to these to the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything is subject to the name of Jesus because you, Father God, have given Jesus all power yes, 
in heaven and in earth, Father God. You've given us authorization to use his name and to be a witness of his name and to re represent his name. We say thank you, Father God. We say glory to your name, Father God. We love you, Father God, all yes. tonight. Yes, Lord. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Hallelujah. You see, it's up to you. What you want from God, you got to come with the expectation that that's God, that's what I want. Amen. You have to learn how to prepare yourself to come in the presence of God. Yes. yes. He says, Hallelujah. offering ourselves a living sacrifice. Come on. We don't come prepared to get in his presence. Yes, exactly. And then sometimes we wonder why God is, why, why is it so stagnant in the spirit? It's because we're not prepared to offer yes, ourselves. Yes, if you want to see a different move of God, then you got to do something different in your personal life. Amen, amen. Your worship got to change. Yes. How you talk has to change. Yes. Hallelujah. We're, just, we're going to prepare for communion. We didn't take it on first Sunday, but we thought it would be fitting to partake of our Pentecost service. There's the new line. Yes. There's a new and freshness of God that He wants us to experience. Yes. We don't serve no old, broken down God. No, we don't. The Holy Ghost, I said before, is always updated. Always in tune. Yes. We can all stand together at this time. Those who are partake. Let us pray. Father, have the news come to you once more. Father God, before we partake in this holy sacrament, Father God, we just pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father God, that you forgive us and cleanse us from yes. anything that we have done, Lord God, that may cause us to be weak and sickly amongst the brethren, Father God. And the Bible says many sleep. So help us, Lord God, to reverence you and to reverence your holy sacraments, Father God. Prepare our hearts and minds, Father God, to partake in this, Father God. For you said as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of you shedding your blood, Father God, and sacrificing your body, Father God. Anything you ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us partake. Together in the name of Jesus, this is his body that he sacrificed. In representation of his body that he sacrificed for us. Let us eat together in Jesus' name. This cup is a representation of the blood. We thank God for the blood that he shed. And the blood still has power. Yes. I believe that yep. when we partake in the Holy Sacrament, God can perform miracles in your life. But you have to believe. Let us drink together in the name of Jesus. Glory to the name. Hallelujah. As you know, we will not have service on this coming Sunday. This is our Sunday service, but on Friday, thank God for all of those who are here. Amen. We will resume that to our services on next week, Tuesday and Wednesday, evangelistic service. Um, I think we have a team to challenge the game next Tuesday. Um, we also have Bible study as we're going to continue to go forth for the purpose of your time to our next uh, power service. Amen. And we'll be back here on next Sunday. Amen. If you desire to give on today, feel free to give. 
I know this is not Sunday, but we encourage you to tithe on today. Whatever you have, you come into the presence of the Lord, and we ready, and we have an offer. Tied unto the Lord. Give back to the Lord what He has blessed you with. Amen. He said, Here, rebuke the devourer. That's the word of the Lord. I know a lot of people don't like that scripture, but listen, when you tithe faithfully, yes. God will take care of you. Yes. God will provide for you. Yes. Then He says, Offer. Offer that sacrificial offer. That sacrifice that you give. Amen. 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 Let us stand. We're going to be dismissed at this time. Uh, congregation, I would like for us to pray for the first family, the members that are traveling this weekend, only for them but all families that travel to graduations, and we pray for their safety and well-being. Father God, Father the Most High, we come to you actually you grant blessings and traveling mercies to not only the family in this house, but to all families going to and from these graduations, these celebrations of life and Advancement. God bless their traveling on the road, bringing back safety to their homes. Not only this family, but all families that are traveling. God, keep them covered. Keep the blow over them, Lord Jesus. Despite all the craziness that's going on in your world, bless them and keep them, Lord, to get to turn back to us. In so Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 We dismiss at this time. Amen. 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 Anybody desire a prayer, we will take this time to pray with you as well. You know, service is complete. We still pray with you. Amen. Long day, man.